So why is Peter Levels a complete marketing genius? And more importantly, how did this happen without him even realizing it? Now, aside from the fact that this guy has almost half a million followers on Twitter, I specifically want to talk about the product Therapist AI in this video. Now, if you've been on Twitter in the last 24 hours, you'll know the absolute shitstorm that this product caused. But I wanted to go through sort of the marketing of how this happened, how it's happened before, and how maybe you could even utilize it yourself for your own product. You know, despite of what you think of this product and what you think of this guy, I mean, I think he's really doing some really cool stuff and he's incredibly transparent about the stuff that he builds i mean you can see here all of his products he's telling you the amount of revenue he makes in everything and that's part of the reason why he has such a large following but anyway he built this product therapist ai and he was actually going to sunset this project i think i don't think he was actually going to keep working on it because it just wasn't seeing much success until this shitstorm happened on twitter and i'll explain that in a second but i decided to test it out and see how it would deal with certain bits in my business or my life so i run a software business chat iq right and Sometimes it's very stressful. Sometimes I'm losing customers. Sometimes I'm not seeing results. Or sometimes I just want someone to talk to about something in my business. And I just basically need to vent or get some feedback or just, you know, just basically some sort of life coach. And that is essentially what he's trying to build here. Now, the problem comes with him labeling it therapist AI, but then also calling it a life coach. Now, you can see he's got a whole load of disclaimers in the product uh, about the product, how it works, how you should always go and see a helpline if you need actual help from a human. But what happens is obviously a lot of people didn't like the fact that this is called a therapist. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. But one thing that I was really impressed with the product itself specifically is I did an example conversation where I said, look, I'm stressed about work. And the conversation replies were fairly ordinary, like it's a chat GPT type of response. In fact, this is using Llama 3, I think. But I was more impressed with how it actually followed up. Uh, so I sent this message on the 24th at midnight. And then the next morning on the 25th, I got this follow up saying, look, since we last spoke, I wanted to check in with you and see how things have been going. Remember, you mentioned you've been struggling with your business. How are things since we last spoke? Have anything happened? Any changes? Are you exploring any new strategies? Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, Peter, actually, I think he did a tweet where he because he uses this product daily himself. Right. And uh, I think he did a tweet where he was like, he said at one point to the therapist life coach that he was going to go to bed and it was like just before you go to sleep just want to make sure that everything's okay blah 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 blah. so it's a very very cool product it's very very interesting what it's doing but obviously it caused an absolute shitstorm so here's what happened right he posted this post um and he like just like i say he was going to end this project he posted this post about it basically saying he's now using llama talking about some of the features if you say i'm addicted to video games i want to find a girlfriend the later it asks about that but you didn't have a girlfriend before if you say you've got a girlfriend right so it's got its own custom memory it's a really cool product but it caused a, a lot of problems. So it got 2 million views, uh, basically. In I think it was basically like one day. It went insane. And obviously you get a lot of people doing sort of the community guideline thing on Twitter, which is a very cool you know, feature. But it basically called, it caused a load of controversy because it's called Therapist AI. But obviously Therapist AI is a regulated term, requires license in most countries, blah, 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 blah. So he's selling it as a life coach, which you can see up here, life coach. But it's also called Therapist AI. Now, chances are he'll probably change the name from Therapist AI at some point. Uh, and the best part is he didn't even realize this was going to happen. He was just genuinely building a product that he thought was generally going to help people. Um, and obviously, it caused a huge amount of upset. Now, I did actually have a chat with him sort of earlier where I basically sort of said, look, this is a really cool way of marketing, right? And that's what prompted me to make this video. And he said, look, crazy. I didn't even think it would be con controversial. Honestly, just wild. Uh, he thought it would be a useful app. It is crazy how insane this went. And a lot of people were a little bit wound up by the product, understandably. So if we actually look at... You know what actually happened. It caused an absolute shitstorm because you've got people on one side who are for the product. People, and he's got you know half a million followers, so he's got a lot of like, fans or people who follow him, who support him, who help him with his product, like his products, and like what he does. Uh, and obviously, those people were definitely standing up for him, saying, "Look." He's seeing all this stuff going on. They really like the product. They don't really see the problem with it. Obviously, it's a very brand new product. Uh, I think also <laughs> this stuff caused a bit of problem saying real therapy is very expensive. It can be $75 to $150. Uh, so he's sort of saying, he's marketing it as therapy to start off with. And then obviously, as people start to get annoyed with it, he starts to change his tune and start to market it as a life coach. And that's understandable, right? You've launched, I've launched products before where you don't realize the response you're going to get from people. You get feedback and then you're like, okay, we can't go down this route. So we're going to relabel it. We're going to rebrand it in this way and that's part of just building a product you know you may not just you launch the product straight away and then this stuff happens so that's that's like a key learning point as it is but then on like the against side you've got people who are going crazy i'm going to be blunt we all idolize the most <laughs> idolize the most uh fucking depraved weirdos um 
if you're encouraging someone who's struggling with mental health illness to talk to ChatGPT, you're an idiot. So basically, people don't like the idea that this guy's built a product that's designed to re replace a therapist's role, and it's literally just a language model, and that's understandable, right? Um, and obviously, it's causing a huge amount of controversy in the comments. People are sharing it. Like, you've got this guy did this post, quarter of a million views. So that's an extra 250,000 views on the original 2 million view post. This guy, uh, where is it? 14,000 views, 3,000 views. Right, I've just taken a couple of screenshots. But there were thousands and thousands of people talking about this. And what happens as a result is there is literally no such thing as bad press, right? So, yes, he's been through a shitstorm, and this guy's got, like, the thickest skin. But you've got thousands of people ripping into him and ripping into this product. But you can see here it was just failing. Like, he wasn't going to do anything with this. This wasn't making any money at all. It's a $9 a month product. Uh, and now it's, like, doing... probably It's probably doing more than two grand a month, and that's probably doing about three or four grand a month now, just because of the amount of eyeballs that were on the product. So this is, like, a key learning lesson, right? Marketing doesn't necessarily need to be specific and niche-based. And I'll get to this in a minute when I talk about sort of chat IQ and how I'm marketing that and how that scaled. But it doesn't need to be niche-based. And a lot of people, when they're starting out a product, they will focus specifically on what the product's features are, and they will start to market those features. So in this case, you would say, look, it's a chatbot that's got memory. It can remember it things that you've told it it will then check up on you those are cool features but then there's the other side of marketing where you kind of have to think outside the box and like whether or not it was a good thing to do that's kind of away from the point but and whether or not he even planned it that's also away from the point the point is it works and it gets eyeballs and obviously it works you know if, if you're getting millions and millions of people seeing the products and hearing everybody talking about it people can be like well what is this maybe i'll give it a go maybe i'll give it a try uh, and then obviously from there you're going to get people who like it and sign up so despite the fact that a lot of people are angry about it you're still going to get people signing up for your product now that doesn't mean you don't have to then pivot and sort out the legal side of things and there's a whole host of other things that happen here and i'm not recommending you go out and deliberately build products that are going to piss people off uh, and you know do things like that because you know other side from the fact there's legal issues but also your payment process may not allow payments for certain products but anyway this isn't a new thing right a lot of people call it the Andrew Tate model. It's not. He didn't invent it. He's just done the same thing that lots of other people have done. This is a company called Protein World. And they did an advert which was basically saying, are you beach body ready? And this is it, right? Posted on tube stations all over the place and obviously caused a massive uproar because of like body discrimination, offense, and basically just being incredibly offensive. Um, now, whether or not they planned it to be like this, I don't know. Uh, I haven't done a huge amount of research into this specific advert, but this is more like to demonstrate the point that controversy sells and gets awareness. And at the end of the day, if you can get awareness on your product, then you're going to be able to sell more from your product. <laughs> like, take this with a grain of salt. You don't necessarily have to go out and piss people off just to get views, but it does work. Um, and you can be smart about how you do it, right? So obviously this caused a whole load of problems to the point where you've got people sharing the problem. You've got people talking about the problem. And if you've got people talking about it and if you can position yourself right where you are pitting two audiences against each other, then you're going to cause controversy. Then you're going to cause conversation. And this works with social media marketing specifically on things like TikTok and Instagram. Right. If you've ever gone onto a TikTok and Instagram page and someone's posted a video that's slightly controversial, the comment section will literally just be people having arguments. Right. And people having arguments is really good because it causes them to keep watching the video as they keep watching the video while they're causing an argument and typing in the comments. That video is getting more watch time. It's being pushed out to more people and it's just getting more and more engagement. And in the algorithm, it's like this is a great video. Keep pushing it. Keep pushing it. Keep pushing it. So that is essentially the Andrew Tate model. Right. Because he did it a lot on TikTok and Instagram, and that's where the conversation started to happen. So then, like, for this, you know, in this case, you get people talking about it on The Guardian, and I haven't gone into, like, social media at all for these ads. Uh, you've got CNBC have picked it up. You've got The Times have picked it up. You've got people actually deliberately... Um, standing against it and you know doing their own campaigns against this specific advert and this is just causing conversation and the more people that pick up on it the more people that share it the more awareness there is for the brand now it doesn't mean that it's good for the brand right <laughs> i want to highlight that point but you can see here 383 million readers total between just these three companies that doesn't mean each you know each post got 383 million views in total but each brand like The Guardian, NBC, CNBC and The Times have 383 million readers total globally between them. So this brand, Protein World, and I've never heard of it before, right, is getting a lot of additional traction and advertising because other people are then sharing it. So it comes down to creating shareable content, creating shareable products. If you, people are going to share inherently because it's like a newsworthy thing um, and they're going to talk about it, then you're just getting free eyeballs on your product. Uh, you've got other ones like Pepsi. You probably remember this one, uh, Kendall Jenner with the Pepsi can basically 
something about going into a Black Lives Matter riot protest. And basically, again, it caused a whole shitstorm. You've got the New York Times picked up on it, CNBC, Mail Online, 400 million readers total between just these three uh, news outlets. And again, right, this is just eyeballs on the product. Now, with brands like Pepsi, which is obviously a huge brand where billions of people know about it, this is probably more of a problem for them than it is actually a good thing. Uh, if you were a small brand and you get 398 million people seeing your product, regardless of whether the news is good or bad, those are still eyeballs on your product. And if you can weather that storm legally and also just keep your business afloat, then it's going to be good for you long term. Uh, and it's kind of the age old thing of like, there's no such thing as bad news. Now, I'm not, like I say, I'm not saying go out and deliberately do these sorts of things, but it does allow you to think outside the box with marketing. Marketing isn't just literally talking about your product in front of people on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. You can be more original in how you market it. And that's where you see people who go out and they market their product by just talking to people on the street. You know, They ask for their opinion on the product. That's different type of marketing because you're engaging other people and not many people see that sort of content. Not many people would do that content and it's a bigger barrier to entry. There's another example, uh, which is Ford, where they basically featured bound and gagged Kardashian sisters in the back of the car. I don't really know what they were trying to achieve from this advert. Uh, I think they actually had to pull this advert back. Yeah, they pulled the advert. But you've got NBC picked up on it, right? They wrote a whole article on it. You've got Fox News, Daily Mail. Now, I'm not saying that Therapist AI would end up in these news articles, and I'm not saying that should be the goal, but it is showing that you know this has happened before. These are from bigger companies. These are from people who have done this before and they've weathered the storm. You know, the businesses have then gone on to succeed. But the point is, this guy didn't know this was going to happen. And obviously everyone picked up on it. Everyone started talking about it. And the more conversation that you can create around your product, the better. Now, it doesn't work for every single product. Like that is not necessarily going to be the case for when you launch your product. Um, and, you know, for example, this is my software, ChatIQ AI. It's an insanely saturated market. But one of the biggest reasons why I saw success right at the start was because I was essentially trying to build what essentially an AI employee for customer service, right? It's a chatbot that can sit on your website and it can answer customers' questions. And I knew that that's going to annoy a lot of people because it's putting their jobs at risk. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it, depending on your stance and your standpoint of where you run your business or if you're an employee, it's putting two people against each other. You've got businesses who are like, yeah, this is going to save me money. This is going to save me time. This is going to be useful for my business. And also I can then get rid of the people who are working for me. That's, you know, one side of the argument. But the other side of the argument is, look, you know, I've had this job for years. I can do it better than AI. Why should an AI just take my job? Blah, 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 blah. This whole thing should be regulated. So I created a piece of content on TikTok I can't remember exactly what it was. I can try and dig it out and do another video on it. But essentially, I was basically saying, look, I fired all my employees and I hired an AI customer service representative and it works, blah, 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 blah. Talk about the product. And it worked. Like you can see 752 customers in the first 48 hours, 1,300 pounds of recurring revenue within two weeks, uh, 4,000 pounds of recurring revenue in two months, in one month, sorry. $10,000 roughly recurring revenue in 60 days. Uh, and, you know, I didn't see, you know, the success of some huge other people, but it does work. You need to find ways of being unique with marketing your product. Uh, and obviously, the more conversations that you can cause, the better it can be for you in terms of reach. Now, I then pivoted and I started doing different types of marketing. I now do most of my marketing, creating content on YouTube, where I'm more targeted and focused because I want higher converting traffic. But the point is, this was over a year ago. And the product survived. There were a lot of people who were hating on me in the comments. And at the time when you do it, you think, you know, everything is going to come crashing down. But at the end of the day, realistically, as long as you can weather that, you'll be fine. At least most of the time. Uh, and you can see, right, the product is still going. I've continued to develop the product. The product is significantly better than it was right at the start. I've got 12,000 people using the product, hundreds of happy users, hundreds of happy customers, uh, a whole boatload of testimonials. So essentially, you know, what I'm trying to get at in this video is... Marketing is more than just talking about your product on the internet, more than just showing people the features. You can be quite advanced and quite strategic with how you market your product. Now, in this case, you know, Peter didn't necessarily know this was going to work, this was going to happen, but it did. And obviously, like, he clearly understands marketing because of the amount of money he makes from all of his different products uh, and projects. But if you can cause a conversation between two different people and you can start to 
get them commenting and sharing and talking about the product, then it's going to be better for you in general. It's just free marketing. There are levels to this and it does take some time to try and work out exactly how to get it to work for you because you've also got your brand image that you need to think about. But yeah, hopefully this sort of sheds a bit of light on some different types of marketing strategies that you can think about. If you guys have got any input on this and what your thoughts are and your questions, let, leave them down below in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys think. Uh, and obviously, if any of you are interested in scaling or building a software, whether you want to build a software and you don't know where to get started or you want to market your software and you don't know how to scale it, if you click the link down below in the description, it'll be the top link. Uh, I have a program which can teach you. It's not, you know, $10,000 a month. It's not even $1,000 a month. It's a very cheap $50 a month program. And I have in there a whole load of course material. There's a whole load of content that's going to teach you exactly how to build your product, market your product. Um, as a community and I'm also putting in there a specific uh, digital download type of plug and play boilerplate which will allow you to have your very own software product that you can then build off on and you can actually start selling. Uh, so that's there for you if you need that but obviously if you've got any other questions leave them down below in the comments and let me know what you think.